let's talk about the restoring force. What is a restoring force? A restoring force is basically any force that brings the object or the system back to a position of equilibrium. So let's take, for example, the spring. Let me draw this better. So let's say we have a spring that has been stretched beyond its natural length. Let's say its natural length is right here. This is the position of equilibrium. We're going to define that position as the center point on the x-axis. So we're going to give it a value of x equals 0. Now let's say the spring has been stretched to the position where x is equal to 3. The equation that gives us the restoring force of a spring is this equation. F is equal to negative kx. k is the spring constant. And let's give it a value of 100 newtons per meter. The spring constant tells you how stiff the spring is, if it's easy to stretch or compress it, or if it's very difficult to do so. So a spring constant of 100 newtons per meter tells you that you require 100 newtons of force to stretch or compress the spring by one meter. So given these values, we have the value of x, we have k, let's calculate the restoring force. By the way, the restoring force is a function of position. As you can see, this restoring force, it depends on the value of x. So it's a function of x or a function of position. As the position changes, the magnitude of the restoring force will change as well as its direction. So in this example, we have k, which is 300 newtons per meter, and x is 3. We'll use the units meters just to keep it simple. You know what? K is 100, not 300. So 100 times 3, that gives us 300. So we have a force of negative 300. And we can see that the units meters cancel. Now, what does this mean? What do we learn from this value here? First, notice the sign. It's negative. That means that the restoring force, when x is equal to 3, it's directed to the left, to the negative x-axis. And that makes sense. That fits the definition of restoring force. Any force that brings an object or a system back to its equilibrium position. So whenever x is positive, the restoring force is going to be negative. It's going to be directed to the left. That is back to the position of equilibrium. Now what about when x is negative? Let's look at the other side of that token. So here's the position of equilibrium, x is 0. And let's say at this point, we're located at x equals negative 2 because we're to the left of the position of equilibrium. What's the restoring force now? The restoring force of the spring is going to equal negative times the spring constant, which we said is going to be 100 newtons per meter, and x is negative 2. So just like before, the unit meters will cancel. Negative 100 times negative 2 is positive 200. So the fact that the force is positive tells us the direction of the force. That is, it's going to be towards the right. And as we could see, in all cases, the restoring force is always directed to the position of equilibrium. Whenever you have a situation like that, whenever you have a force whose function is based on position, and it's always directed to the position of equilibrium, that force is known to be a restoring force. So when x is negative, the restoring force is positive. It's going to be directed back to the position of equilibrium. 
when x is positive that means when you're to the right of the position of equilibrium the restoring force is going to be negative it's going to be directed to the left back to the position of equilibrium so that's the basic idea behind the restoring force any force that brings an object back to equilibrium now potential energy can be found from force if you know the force function you can determine the potential energy function the potential energy function is the negative integral of the force function in the case of springs the force function or the restoring force function is negative kx so using this formula we can determine the elastic potential energy of a spring using calculus so let's replace fx with negative kx now if you recall if you want to integrate a function let's say if you have a variable raised to a constant x to the n is going to be x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 and of course you could add plus c the constant of integration Now the two negative signs will cancel, so we can make them positive. K is a constant, so I'm going to move that to the front. So we're integrating x to the first power. So in this example, n is 1. So we're going to add 1 to n and then divide by that result. And of course, we could put the plus c if we want to but I'm not going to worry about that in this problem. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we get this. Therefore, the elastic potential energy of a spring is 1 half kx squared. So that's how you can use calculus to determine the elastic potential energy function of a spring starting from the restoring force function. By the way, this function here is also known as the spring equation. Sometimes you may see it referred to it as that. Now, let's talk about another example of a restoring force. And this has to do with a pendulum. So let's talk about the simple pendulum. Let's say this is the position of equilibrium and the pendulum is to the right. So in the last example, with the spring, the restoring force depended on position, in this case, the x value. For the simple pendulum, the restoring force depends on not linear position, but angular position, basically the value of the angle that the pendulum makes with the vertical line. So when theta is positive, that is when a pendulum is to the right of the position of equilibrium the restoring force is going to be in this direction in this case gravity or a component of gravity provides the restoring force the force needed to bring the pendulum back to equilibrium this restoring force it appears to be going towards the left in the negative direction but since we're dealing with circular motion it's going in the clockwise direction. Now, on the other side of this token, if the pendulum is to the left, the angular position is negative. And the restoring force, well, it appears to be going to the right. So that's basically positive it's going in the counterclockwise direction. Now, of course, in trig, let's say starting from the positive x-axis, if you go in a counterclockwise direction, you're going to get a positive angle. But starting from the x-axis, if you go in the clockwise direction, you'll get a negative angle. So our storing force 
that goes in a counterclockwise direction. You can think of it as a positive restoring force and one that goes in the clockwise direction, you can think of it as a negative restoring force. But now how can we get the equation of this restoring force? So here is the pendulum and here is gravity, the weight force. So gravity being a force is a vector and now we need to draw the components of that force. So we have a component that is going to be parallel to the direction of motion and we have one that's going to be perpendicular to it. And we need to do this in such a way that we make a right triangle. So here is the angle theta, which is the same as this one. This side is adjacent to the angle, which is associated with cosine. So this is going to be mg cosine theta. This side is opposite to the angle that's associated with sine. So that's going to be mg sine theta. And this is the restoring force. Notice that the restoring force vector is parallel to this component. The only thing that we need to add is a negative sign. So the restoring force equation is negative mg sine theta. By the way, for those of you who want more example problems on spring equations, restoring force, uh, the simple pendulum, or Hooke's Law, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting videos that cover this topic that has more example problems, as well as other related topics in physics that you might currently be studying. So feel free to take a look at that for those of you who want access to more uh, educational resources. But that is the formula for the restoring force of a simple pendulum. So remember, a restoring force is any force that will bring an object or the system back to its position of equilibrium. And in this video, we covered two examples, the restoring force of springs and of simple pendulums. Thanks for watching.